Welcome back. This is week three of Fusion Mondays. Today we're going to be talking, we're going to do these two projects, the basic block and the angled block. This one has to do sub with subtractive manufacturing, and this one has to working with irregular shapes. So let's get right into it. Let's get started. We're going to start at this top one. If we take a look at these dimensions, we do have to do some math because this part is not probably properly dimensioned. It should give us an overall dimension. But if we go 1 plus 2 plus 2 is 5, so it's 3 by 5 inches long. So let's jump over to Fusion. Let's start a sketch and pick a plane. And we're going to draw a rectangle. As normal, I like a uh, center justified rectangle, so it was 3 by 5. And when we're done, we're going to go ahead and hit extrude, or we're going to jump into extrude. We, of course, can hit finish sketch extrude. Um, we could also do uh, E to skip right through it, and it is one inch thick from the drawing. So we have our basic block. Let's go ahead and save this. So if we open up the Fusion Monday folder so that it'll automatically save into there, we can then save and call this week one. Um, your last name and uh, basic block. Okay, now um, this is subtractive extruding essentially is what I'm trying to teach. Up into this point, we've always made shapes and added them together. Now we're going to make a shape and subtract it from this block. So if we look back at the drawing, You'll notice we got to cut out a rectangle. Now we can cut this out on the surface of this top part, or we can cut it out on the side and extrude it through. Either way is correct. There is no right or wrong way to approach this. So I'm going to do it the way I would perceive it as being slightly more challenging, I guess would be the say, which is I'm going to draw on the front edge a rectangle and extrude across the top. So it's going to be two inches wide a half an inch tall and it has to be one inch away from this side. So if we click back to Fusion, we're going to start a sketch on this surface of the part. And we are then going to draw a rectangle. And in this case, I'm not going to use a center justified. I'm going to click on the top edge and just drag it across. Um, I'm going to do D, which is our quick key to get into the dimensioning tool. And we are going to jump and grab those two lines for one inch we are going to grab this line to two inches. And once again, students obviously like, I put a dimension, it's still blue. Remember, the movement is in this way. So we need to constrain it by putting a dimension up and down. So we're going to go from there to there and do 0.5. Oops. 0.5. So we're going to go ahead and hit E for extrude. And we are going to select this surface, and if we pull it out this way, it'll make an object. If we push it that way, it's going to turn into a cut. Sometimes you get the computer not understanding what you want, and you have to force it from a join to a cut, which you can do here. Um, I'm not going to go all the way through because I want to show you um, a couple of things. Well, yeah, do that. And we go ahead and click OK. Well, that's not the shape we wanted. So a lot of times when you make a mistake, how do you fix your mistake? And that's what I really wanted to show. So there's two ways to fix mistakes. Let's say first off that we wanted to make this block. Instead of it being 3 inches by 5 inches, we wanted to make it 5 inches by 7 inches. We can go to the sketch and go edit sketch. And then we can come in here and change these numbers. And if I did that, um, 5 and let's say 7, which is roughly the same scale, and hit finish sketch, it would automatically update that drawing to that bigger size. Now I'm going to hit control Z, control Z, control Z to get us back. Now I want to extrude this further than I actually had. If you click on the feature down here in the timeline, you can edit a feature which would then allow me to increase this number to negative three. So I can then go ahead and click OK. Now the next step we need to do is we need to put in this circle, which doesn't have a dimension, so I just said 0.5 will work. And we're going to have to locate 
the center of the circle at 1.5 from the bottom and 1. Point, and sorry, 1.0 from the right hand side. So we come back over here, we're going to start another sketch and we're going to choose this surface, which is where we want to put the circle. We're going to draw a circle. Now, what, just like on linear measurements, um, we can go ahead and type in 0.1 right now and we'll get that circle. We can also double click on the dimension and have typed it in there. So we can go ahead and hit dimension from here to here. And that was 1.0. And from here to here, and that is um, 1.0. I'm sorry, the first one was 1.5. So we can go ahead and hit finish sketch, or in my case, press E on the keyboard. And I'm going to select this. Another way to get it to go the opposite direction is if I type in a negative 1.0, it will automatically go through the part and cut the part. So we now have our part fully modeled the way we want it. Now, another element we're going to teach out of this lesson is if we jump over here, you'll notice that this part is supposed to be made of stainless steel. A common way in my class and in a lot of, you know, modeling programs to see if you've learned how to do it properly is to use the capabilities of the software to give us number values um, of it. So what I'm trying to say here is we can set this material to stainless steel and then we can look up its mass, its volume, its area and that's one way I can check to see if you drew the part correctly because if those three numbers match then you clearly did it correctly. So how do we do that? We're going to right click on the name of the file right here and you'll notice there says physical material. That's going to bring up this chart and we can open, it's going to look like this, we can open metals and then we can scroll down, there are a lot of metals, to stainless steel. I don't know if I went past it. It looks like I did. There it was. I saw it go by. Stainless steel. So there's one called stainless steel. And I can just drag. I'm pressing and holding on my uh, mouse and drop it on there. And it's now going to look, change color and look like stainless steel. I always like to do the fun one with students, which is gold. There it is, solid gold. Right? Um, and we can go back to stainless steel. Um, and then we can go ahead and hit close, and then we can go to physical or properties right here, same area, right click, down properties. And if we go to physical here at the bottom, it tells us the mass of this would be 54.584 ounces, the volume is 11.8, and the area is 41.178 square inches. So with these three numbers, density, as long as the material is correct, will always be the same. With these three numbers, I can easily check, did you draw this correctly? Is your part the correct shape? And sometimes they vary by a thou, maybe two thou, maybe five thou, if you do it in different orders of operations. So if you put the hole in first and then cut the... Um, this also often when you start putting chamfers on, it depends if you add a little extra spot. Short version being, it gives us a really close number to knowing if you uh, did it right. So this part's good. So we're going to go ahead and close here. We're going to hit save to make sure we got it. Notice it'll upgrade a little, the little thumbnail. And we're going to go ahead and get started on our second Fusion Monday for week number three, which is to do this angled block. <clears throat> Um, I like to call this the two-minute challenge because I used to, kids would spend 15, 20, 30 minutes trying to solve this, and I could solve it in two minutes or less. And the big issue here is that you have to think differently. A lot of people want to make a block and then cut away the angles. That's not really the best approach for this. The best approach is to draw, not worry about these little wing feet things here and draw this triangular-ish, trapezoidal-ish shape um, first, and then extrude it, and then add the wings at the end. So what we're trying to do, similar to the Lincoln L of a few weeks ago, is we would like to, uh, similar of the Lincoln L of a few weeks ago, we, we are going to draw a shape and then extrude it. So we're going to do this all in lines. So we're going to go ahead and hit new design. We're going to start a sketch here. And we are going to draw a shape. And now this is where 
problems can occur. Right here is kind of the shape I wanted. There we go. First one I can tell you right now is this bottom line was not horizontally constrained. So we're going to do that. And then we can start putting in the dimensions. And what often happens is students start to walk around dimensions like, oh, we'll put in this 9, uh, 4 dimension. Oops. Well, the best dimensions to always start with, I'm going to delete that, is the two big ones. So this is 0.28. And this here is point uh, two four four. Two point four four. But notice our shape has gone bad. I just hit escape on the keyboard because what I'm gonna do is I am just gonna drag the corners and try to flip it around and get it back to roughly the shape we saw on the drawing. So we're trying to get it back to this rough shape. This often happens for new um, designers in when they start drawing the whole shape and then start trying to dimension it. Now I can go back and put on like this dimension, which happens to be 0.49. Uh, and a dimension here, which is a dimension from a line to a point. And this is 0.8. So if we look back at the, at the part, you'll notice that there was this line to that corner, and that's 0.8. So you have to click on the little ball. When I did that, that little ball that appears right there will allow you to click on a corner. Now, we also have to learn to put in angles. Angle's really quite easy. We just simply click on the two lines we want the angle. It's going to give us four options. There, 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 and there. You'll notice two of them are always the same. Those two are the same number, and then these two are the same number, so it doesn't matter which way we do it. We're going to do it this way and type in 45, and do the same thing over here, and this is also 45. And you notice now we have a fully constrained part um, relatively easily achieved. So we're going to go ahead and hit E on the keyboard to jump right with the extrusion. Um, the math from the drawing is the whole thing is 0.28 uh, and each side is 40, so that means that the center core is 2. So we're going to go ahead and do that to 2 inches. Perfect. We are going to start a sketch here. We are going to draw a 1.5 inch diameter circle. Notice I noticeably didn't put it in the center. And then I'm going to dimension it from the right side to the center, which is on the drawing, to 1. And from the bottom to the top, which I believe is 1.5. Nope, it was 1. There we go. Now, we're going to go ahead and hit Finish Sketch, and we're going to hit Extrude. And we're going to select the circle, and we want to push it all the way through. Now, here is a problem. You notice that we would have to pull it out a long distance to get it all the way through. And, it's, you know, if there were other elements of the part that might be interfering with this circle, we could have a problem. So what we are going to do is we've been using only distances for extrusions. What we really should be using is uh, object all, which will cut all the way through. There we go. And the advantage to using all is, I can go ahead and click OK, is if I went back and modified the size edit feature, if I change these numbers, made it bigger, this would always make sure it cut all the way through. Where if I use a distance and I said, oh, go four inches through, and then I made this thing much bigger, it would only ever go four inches, which may not be th through on a bigger part. So this looks good. Um, we are now going to put on those wings. We're going to start a sketch on this front plane. And we are going to use two corner justified. And I'm going to type in 0.4, which I demoed in previous lesson, and 0.4 right off the bat to get that. And I'm going to do another one over here. 0.4, tab, 0.4. Okay, and now we are going to extrude these. And in this case, instead of doing a distance, which is 2.8 to get it to the back, we are going to use up to object. And if I select the back plane, it will then extrude to that surface. Once again, if I then change the size of this angled block, it would still extrude all the way to the back. If I had typed in 2.8, it would only ever extrude 2.8. So if I made it 5 inches deep, it would just stop at 2.8. So 
whenever you're do when you're built in designing a part and you want it to always go to the back, if you can make it connected to the back, that's a far better approach. So we have this part done. We need to set the material. And so we're going to jump over here and figure out what it is. It is also stainless steel. So we are going to go and go right click under unsave and go physical material. And we're going to scroll down again to the stainless. Drag it on, close. We could then go in, of course, and check the properties and tell us our mass. But right now, I'm not looking for that. I'm looking that you understand you could apply stainless steel to it. And um, we are done. Time to save. So we're going to go ahead and hit the save key. And it's W2. I'm sorry, W3. My mistake. Did I do W2 last time? Oh, I did W1 basic block. I'm going to have to edit that. Good opportunity to teach that. Seacrest. And uh, this is angle block. Now, you notice this came up down here. I made a mistake and put this in uh, up here at week one. What I can do is I can, I find it better to have them closed. I think it will do it, uh, update on its own. But you can right click on this and say rename. And you can go ahead and change this to three. Now, what a lot of students do is they say, oh, it's changed, and they click away, and it then doesn't save it. You have to press Enter. And now it should save it. And if I probably hit Refresh, it would then move that to the bottom where they are. They will go in alphabetical order um, within the week. Like, you notice last week we did fillet first and then chamfer. Um, and this week we did basic block first and then angle. So that's alphabetical decision because everything else is correct. But... Um, it doesn't really matter. If I ask you to bring up one of the assignments, you can still find it fairly easily right there. Well, that concludes week three. Hope you learned something, and I'll catch you in the next one.